Gerard, Gerard Fabia, I work in advertising and I, I drop in and out of Poblacion because I love the place so much. I want to live here someday when I grow up. I, I'm also known as the Phantom. Hi, I'm Marvin Verano. I reside in Poblacion. It's part of our crawl. It's Dr. Wine. This is my Ferrari. So, um, I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Name is Marcus Yentes. Some people call me Cali Calientes because he's a DJ. Uh, I, by trade, am a guy in the graphic design industry, do digital marketing and advertising. And on my free time, cocktails, good eats, do pub crawls once in a while with buddies. And when time permits, get out of town, hit the beach. My name is Oksana, it's also on my channel, and we're doing that um, pub crawl. And I'm so surprised to discover amazing places here in Poblacion. I thought I know a lot, but actually, I don't know anything. <laughs> so, and more to come. Let's see. Cheers. Hi everybody, I'm Lord. This is my channel. I'm a banker by trade, but a foodie at heart. So we're gonna do this amazing pub crawl, meet some of my friends. Hi guys, I'm here at Backwell by BBC, and Today we're going to do a special series. We're doing a pub crawl for the Poblacion area of Makati, which is known for very trendy bars and restaurants. So I'm here with a few friends and I'll introduce you to them. Backwell was opened in 2016 by Atenean Luigi Nunez, who wanted to set up an upscale dining experience with a twist of beer below zero, which originated in Davao. This is a popular hangout for Lasalites and Ateneans, which is considered by some to be the two best universities in the Philippines. So I'm starting off with Beer Below Zero. They pioneered this technology. San Miguel. Light. Cheers, guys. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so we're here with quite a few friends. Marcus, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, Marcus, work in the advertising and digital industry. I'm an artist, photographer, love the jet ski, and hell, drink too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Marvin. Uh, I do um, house calls, veterinary services, and I'm conducting this food crawl for you people. Uh, hope you enjoy. Yeah, Marvin's also known as the Pope of Poblacion. Um, it's a moniker I gave him a few months ago when we started this, this series. My name is Jared Fabia. I work with Mark Yantes as well. I'm in advertising. And tonight is our escape from the world of reality for just a little bit. Hi, my name is Oksana and I'm very excited for the pop crawl. Aside from the beer below zero, from their menu, we would highly recommend the Tangige Ceviche, grilled pork chop, and all meat pizza. It's 4.30 p.m. It's still a bit early, but we're starting off with a tangige ceviche, and it's served with flying fish roe and a lemon vinaigrette. Yeah, eventually. The owners are also our clients. I think it's very fresh. It's a very nice starter with a beer. Um, tell us a little bit about the history of this place. Well, um, Poblacion started out as just a quiet little neighborhood. There are bars here and there, and then, um, and then, actually, um, two people came up with the idea of um, gentrification of Poblacion. Um, I'm lucky to have to call them my friends. Um, one would be Romel Marasigan, owner of Z. Later, we'll show you his development and his vision and then um, followed by um, 
followed by the owner of Tambay, Tambay Melvin Visceral. Mel, Melvin Visceral, who um, opened, all he wanted to do was sell beer. And then it became a Yakiniku. Tambay. Right? Yeah. Tambay. And now there's a Tambay Alley and a second floor where they sell. So we'll show you later. So stay if tuned. I mean, if I mean. And you know, Poblacion is the antithesis of Philippine property development. Mm. When somebody wants to develop a property or make it hot, it's always got to be glossy, polished, yes. beautiful, uh, new. Poblacion is not new. It's one of the older Makati districts. And it's built on the spine of the red light district that goes down Burgos, Burgos Street. And perhaps that's the reason for its success is that it's built on real character. I mean, the best gentrified places in any community, in any city, is built on the back of some, a little bit of seediness, a little bit of uh, uh, black character. That's what sells Poblacion. That's what makes it different from perhaps all these Pleasantville wannabes like Serendra or, or Rockwell just down the street. What's up, Dick? Everything's up, buddy. Yeah. Welcome, stop, bro. Stop markets up. Hi. Oh, hi. So, Happy New Year. This, is, this is Marvin. Hi, Jake. This is how publishing works. People walk in, people walk out, they are friends. You take my chair, buddy. Our party is getting bigger. Okay, we got some beer below zero. I'm up for my next round of Sun Mig Light. So, Bill. Bill. Thank you. So why is it in the brown paper bag? To maintain uh, the, pro the pros of the beer. The pros, yeah. When serving so that it's not like somebody held it before. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Cheers. Cheers to Thank frosty you. beers. Cheers okay. to frosty beers. Frosty, beer. frosty, frosty beer. beer. I just de-virginized that bottle with yeah. my handprint. <laughs> yeah, baby. This is going to be a great night. That ceviche was so awesome. We're already on our third order of ceviche, but we got two more dishes. Uh, we got the all meat pizza with a very, with a paper thin crust, as well as the grilled pork chop. So these are some of their specialties that they have here. I haven't tried any of those yet, but we'll dig in. This is that super thin crust pizza. Oh, it's loaded. It's got bacon in there, some Spanish, some blood sausage. Wow. Uh, audience. Yeah, I do yeah. see some blood sausage. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. Right? Basic ingredients and it just comes together so well. Perfect with the <laughs> freezing beer. <laughs> and a nice crunchy yeah. thin crust. It's not all bready and what do you think, babe? How was that? I was afraid that it will all fall apart. Mm. Yes, but the um, crust is very mm. strong. <laughs> so it holds well and you can enjoy with each bite the right amount of cheese and meat. Okay, let's see if we can hear this crunch factor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Personally, I'm a huge fan of all meat pizzas. I love bacon. I'm just so impressed with blood sausage here. It's delicious and this cute little baby like sausage too. Mm. Good. Um, oh. Yes, look. It's not overdone. It's not underdone. Usually pork chops are overdone in the Philippines. But you see it. Just for a amount of fat. You have blood sausage in the I like this, just like the charcoal. It's not. Me how? It's best. I want to use my hands right now, grab a bunch of rice, and, you know, boozle fight. Yeah. 
Well, that grilled pork chop was quite fantastic. Uh, you know, very thin slice, but at the end of the day, it still had a lot of moisture in it. So it was delicious, perfectly grilled, super enjoyed that. And now Dick just tried some of the pizza. Have you tried it yet? Or you just put yes, it on your plate? I took a bite. And how was it? It's nice. It's very nice. It's very meaty and cheesy <laughs> at the same time. Awesome. So we were at the top end of Poblacion. Kalayaan Corner, Algiers. This is where it begins. Extends for a few blocks, maybe around four or five blocks that way, and another six or maybe even ten blocks down yes, that way. Correct. Yeah. And within, it's a spider web of streets and new places are springing up there almost every week. Owner owned and owner run. That is the policy here. We are anti mall. If you got a spot in the mall, you can. Sorry, can't come in here. You got to be owner run and owner owned. Yeah. No conglomerates allowed. Okay, so what's what's next? Where are we going to next? Dr. Marvin. Y. Dr. Y next. Marvin is a resident here and he has this bike, see? Built this in um, 78. It's a Colnago. All Italian parts. Wow. That is baby. gorgeous. Baby. It's my baby. So you're telling me about the uh, zoning that's happening here. Right. On um, the private side, at least. Yes. Um, exactly. Um, the premise of um, non-mall uh, places and um, owner-run and owner-owned. Um, it became like a, like a rule. And then the following just hooked on. So... Right now, we got all these small little tiny places that we, we will introduce to you and so the people that, actually serving you yeah, the food. You got the that owners. level of intimacy and commitment to service that you just don't get with small restaurants. <laughs> right up here, no? Holy smokes or No, no. Okay. Um, we just eat. We get a drink. So we're on the way to Dr. Wine and they have a happy hour daily, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. All you can drink, house wine. Red or white. Any bubbly? I think they have from Prosecco. Hi. Prosecco. Hi. Hi. Oh, you, you successfully went yesterday. Hi, I'm, I'm meeting some people. Yeah, you like this place? This place. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So I'm going to... Nice to sit outside, man, but... Uh, let's walk in. Hi. Um, we'll take this couch. Now sit this couch. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll take this. We'll just, I'll just show them. Now. Wow, this place is gorgeous. Love the wine rack over here. Okay, let's take a tour. So you got um, from 7,000 pesos to 70,000 peso bottles here. You have a grand bottle of oh, sure. Hey, a lot of French wine. I'm here with the owner Vincent of Dr. Wine. Nice to meet you. So when did you guys open? We just opened uh, five months ago. Uh, opened five months ago. We've been uh, we've been doing this project since more than a year uh, with the construction. Um, because actually the first Dr. Wine is located in uh, Shanghai. I used to live 10 years in Shanghai before. Oh wow, so is this like some kind of franchise? Or? It's not the franchise, technically it's not. But uh, I opened the first one in Shanghai, then I sold it. And it was 10 years ago. Then I met my wife, uh, she's Filipina. She brought me in the country. And uh, I have this idea that uh, Dr. Wine number two, I have the right to do that. I was like, uh, this is the perfect location. Well, we live just near uh, in Rockwell. And I, I used to run around in Poblacion and I realized that this, uh, this small area is the last, uh, last area when you have uh, like a kind of feeling very authentic. 
you know, you, you know that you live in Philippines because you have the neighbor, you you have um, a street art. Um, it's very hyper. Um, how do you say, hipster? Yeah. It's very hipster location, so um, fit perfectly with a uh, Dr. Wine. As you can see, it's, uh, the design. We make the design. I, I do the design all myself. So that's awesome. This place is just gorgeous. This is probably one of the most beautiful wine bars I've ever been to. This place is amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. So as you can see, the, the decoration is all about, um, we, we get that from a whole house in Sahanga. It's uh, all, the, all the wood is come from a whole house, like 100 years old uh, wood, uh, that we just renew it, restore it. All the wood around, we did not even touch it actually. The same color, the same painting that it used to be in Akhanda. Then you can see, uh, you can see also uh, on the floor you have the triple uh, Machuca style. It's a very ridiculous style. Uh, you used to do that for 350 years now. So simple restaurant location, bar area, always open. As the same we do uh, in Shanghai. Sharing table because the wine is very good for that to share. It's an experience to, that you like to share between friends. Um, and then different atmosphere with the lounge and with the wine cellar area. So I hope you enjoy it. Huh? Okay, and you said there's a roof deck area. Then we have a roof deck, so may I show you? Sure. Okay. Maybe first I can show you, uh, we have a private lounge, we call that the third floor. Yeah. So it's only for private customer. Okay. Uh, like you make your own birthday or you, that's where we do the, the wine tasting as well. Wow. So here yeah, it's like a really like a, it's an extension of Dr. Wine. We want to make it like a, it's a home actually. It's like your home, your dream home. So a long table, you can share for 20 people. You have your own sound system. Um, then you have your lounge, just to have a appetizer, and uh, it's just private. So we close it. You can do whatever you want inside. What's the minimum consumption to? It have depends. The, the week is like twenty-five. Uh, weekend is fifty, but it's all consumable. Excellent. So you can have your chef. You have the kitchen. You can bring your own chef if you want. We have the chef for you. We can cook it in the front of you, and we serve it right away. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Follow me. I show you the the rooftop. So the name of the rooftop is named Cartel. That's my second business in Shanghai. The first cartel is located in Shanghai, and this is Cartel Mania. Wow! That is amazing. 360 view, you can see. That is all, uh, great. Like this, that you can see all uh, Mania. That's a real eye opener. Rockwell, Suntory Mall. Publication in front of you. This is all publication actually. We're on the top of publication, and then you have um, Bel Air with a nice uh, forest and fort, of course, on the, on the back. I never would have expected this on it's, the top of this. It's building. a good surprise, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I understand. Our, our first thing, our first idea, it was just to open Dr. Wine. Then we took, we take over the whole building, and because uh, we expect to do the private room, and then the owner opened to us uh, the roof deck, and we were like, wow. This is perfect for the uh, for Cartel too. The same story. Okay, you know what it's time for? It's time for some wine. For some drinks. <laughs> So we're just about to have a glass of their house red. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 
This is such a beautiful location. You would never expect this kind of awesome wine bar in Poblacion. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and this is just the beginning. That's right. Yeah, the sun's still out, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, So we just moved to the roof deck and you really have panoramic views and we're here for the sunset. This is just gorgeous. Guys, what do you think? One of the best roof deck oh, bars yes. in Makati. Like not too high, not too low. Ah! <laughs> Bit of a commitment to get here, but worth it. That's four flights of stairs. Nice vocabulary. Actually, you know what? Yeah, not too high. Not, not, too, low. not too low, baby. <laughs> yeah, it is a good bar. It is it's a good, it's a good bar, man. Yeah, man. Great bar. Actually, I like it. It's windy, eh? Yeah, yeah you can see yeah, the planes yeah. all yeah, flying in. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Up next, we're at Holy Smokes. This is one of the best places in Poblacion for slowly cooked, smoked barbecue. Hi, good evening. Welcome to Holy Smokes. Uh, we feature our Texas-style barbecue. Uh, our, our, our meats are cooked uh, 12 to 16 hours using our uh, local food food for smoking. Uh, everything everything are here is very good. You should try it. What's your best sellers? Best sellers, you should try our uh, signature beef brisket. It's a USDA beef. We have our pork ribs, uh, full of the bone, our chickens, and we have our wagyu brisket, also USDA. When did you guys open? Uh, we opened last uh, last October, October three, uh, two thousand sixteen. Uh, we're about running uh, for about one and a half years. And you only open at six p.m. right? Uh, we open at five p.m. until twelve in the midnight, and on Sundays we have lunch by eleven a.m. until two p.m. And then we we'll resume our operations at 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Excellent. I can't wait to try this stuff. Holy Smokes is a Texas barbecue joint first opened in 2016 by pitmaster Juano Gutierrez and a group of young entrepreneurs. Their concept is a Spartan self-service casual dining slow smoked neighborhood barbecue restaurant that opens at 5 p.m. which is the best time to go as their signature beef brisket just came out of the smoker. They use a custom-built offset smoker which is positioned to the side of the restaurant along with a pile of santol and kaimito wood to infuse local flavors into their meats. What's up Marvin? I guess you're ordering us some beverages. Right. What did you guys what'd you order? We got Coronas. We got Coronas, Sun Glide, some pale. These are the balls and all the fixings. For a group of four, we would highly recommend 500 grams of brisket, 300 grams of pork ribs, and half a chicken, and a healthy serving of side dishes including their sweet potato tots, chili con carne, macaroni and cheese, and coleslaw. Their fork tender and succulent brisket is smoked for 12 hours, the pork ribs for 9, and the chicken for 6 hours. So it's self-service here, order first, pay, and then bring your food to the table. We got ourselves the private room tonight. Are you guys ready for this meat orgy ahead of us? Meat orgy, yeah. Meat orgy, meat orgy. Meat orgy is the way. That's not the best uh, phrase. Meat orgy. A morgy. A morgy in the house. Morgy. 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 Okay, we're starting off with some Coronas and San Miguel's. Cheers! Morgy. Morgy. Morgy, Morgy. Morgy. 
So I got myself a little bit of Texas on a plate. We got the beef brisket, sweet potato tots, and the chili con carne. Look how tender this is. Oh my god. This is pork tender. The sauces that come with it is the original. Spicy and sweet. So let me try that with the original. Even the next day. I like chicken tandoori. Even also if you broke the meat is extremely tender and well smoked. You really taste the wood. Wow, the chili con carne is ultra tender. And the tots, sweet potato tots with uh, cheese and bacon. Wow, that's just wonderful. And now we got the chicken. <laughs> Every single time. Look at that, it's that beautiful. It's just fabulous. It smells wonderful. You can see all the herbs already on the skin. Yeah. I'm salivating. This meat orgy just got better with the arrival of that pit roasted chicken. I mean, babe, what do you think? <laughs> that meat looks quite succulent. Remind you of somebody else's meat. Dick, what can you say? What can you say about that? There's a lot of flavor that goes. What can you say about that bird? The bird. Don't touch my bird. <laughs> That's what I can say. But the flavor goes all the way through. It's not like just on the outside, you know? It goes all the way inside. You can taste it to the bone. And the sauce goes really well with it. Gerard, Marcus, what do you guys think? You know what, look at the juice on this plate, man. Yeah, man. That's all from the chicken. It's incredible. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. It's worth saving your appetite for something. No, seriously. I mean, yeah, it's not oil reserve, huh? It's not oil, huh? Yeah, it's oil, perfect. Huh? Perfect. I mean, it's like, really good it's stuff. It's like grease on the... Thing. Super tender, too. Nice. Yeah. It's not Super raw. Super juicy. Yeah, no, 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 not raw at all. You don't see many breasts with that much moisture. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Cheers! Cheers, Cardinal! Cheers to that! <laughs> to the rest! Okay, it's my turn to try this chicken. I love how crispy that skin looks and all the herbs they must put in there. See you later! Wow! That slice of chicken I just had, that took me to barbecue heaven. That is fucking fantastic. Love it. So we just finished our dinner and I can tell you this place takes slow smoke barbecue to another level. Everything we had was just delicious. Zero week dishes, and it actually makes me want to have another serving, but I'm already kind of stuffed. And it's just amazing. I will be back. Babe, what do you think? But I like more carbs. <laughs> I like a sweet potato croquetas, whatever it was. And I like coleslaw. It was very fresh ingredients, and I like the sauce because even though it says um, cheese, but it tastes so much like a fresh, fresh sour cream, and I enjoy it fully. Yeah, yeah. The hard is hard. What do you gotta say about this place? Have you been? Amnesia, man. I don't have my name anymore. It's all good. This right here, the spicy sauce. It's awesome, man. You can tell the difference. The preparation, the flavoring, the ingredients. It's, just, it's always been a favorite. Oh, it's it's just, it's just, it's on another level, like you said. Can't get enough of this. I'll let him go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dick, that was my name, man. Overall, everything was fantastic. What we had was just the tip of the iceberg. If you go outside, you're gonna see in the menu they have a lot of sides to choose from. We actually didn't have the pork, which was something I was very curious about, but the sauces, I think, are the secret thing. 
You're down. never, you're never gonna lose with any of the sauces. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Here, my shot outside. The, yeah. Here, by the smoke. Can you see it? They smoke it right here, guys. This is where the magic happens. This is when it's uh, already after hours because it takes like 16 hours to cook. Correct. And that's what we're enjoying now. Whatever they did here. It's all Filipino ingenuity. Careful, there's a hump, a hump. Ah! Oh, right? Ah, yeah. So, so this is Otto with quite an amazing sound system. I want to show that to you. So that's the best Korean grocery in Poblacion. Apparently all the Korean restaurants get all their stuff here. So are we off to next? Well, right now we're on Don Pedro, also known as Z Street, where Z Hostel is. Um, look, we're just we're just walking. This Yala Yala, it's a Lebanese restaurant. We'll do that on another uh, crawl. Crawl, yeah. They, you know, they do fantastic bread there. Yeah. So the shawarma there is good? Uh, the chicken? Chicken shawarma is good, yeah. yeah? I stay away from the lamb. Up next, Polilia, which is a high-end bar here in Poblacion. Polilia is regarded as the poshest bar in Poblacion and opened its doors in September 2017 owned by Ian Paradis and Partners and was conceptualized as the tasting room for the Encanto local craft beer brewery which is the microbrewery he started with Rhode Island brewmaster Josh Carton. For Pub Grub, they brought in Chef Luis de Terry whose family owns the gourmet Spanish restaurant Terry Selection which we've featured before. You don't even believe it? A very old friend of mine is here, Joey Reyes. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, yeah, bro. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, eh? Joey has a few bars here in Manila. What are those bars, dude? Uh, B-Side Black Market in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Very Some cool. of the coolest places in town. So let's cheers, guys. Yeah, there you go. Cheers, bro. A pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are busy, but I'm also having a an Encanto Draft Beer, which is a local microbrew. Very delicious. This immaculately designed full-service bar and restaurant features some of the coziest couches and notably serves only craft beers, no San Miguel. You can expect to rub shoulders with the conos and mestizos, as the first language in the bar is Spanish. Paradis' grandmother was from the Aboitis clan. Aside from the party favors and eye candy, you can expect a truly memorable time here. I just arrived at Tumbai. This is one of the trendiest and hottest uh, bars and restaurants in Poblacion area. You wouldn't believe it, but this is some crazy hole in the wall that extends all the way through. Let me show you. 
Tambay used to be a Sari Sari store and dorm that was converted into a yakitori hangout by Melvin Visceral, Chef Jerome Valencia, Chris Barringer, and Franco Acampo, and is frequented by young couples, expats, and yuppies. Aside from the alfresco Sari Sari store facade, they have an oyster bar and a tempura stall within. Hey Melvin, how are good. you? Good, good. So I'm with Chris Berenger. He's one of the part owners here at Tambay. Chris, could you tell us a little bit about the concept? Uh, yeah, um, basically this whole alley is now called Tambay Alley. And uh, as, you, as you can see, uh, we're, uh, we have one theme. It's Japanese. Now, everything here is Japanese. Uh, if we come closer here, oh, sorry, that's Elmo. Okay. This is uh, AB10, a tempura Japanese uh, restaurant. Okay, and then over here, the next uh, uh, resto bar is called Wantusawa, and it's famous for its oysters there. And of course, uh, original tamba is there. Which uh, is yakitori style, right? Wa yakitori style, which has been here for more than three years. Uh, uh, Ebi Ten and Watusawa uh, just recently opened last December, so and we're happy that uh, a lot of people are patronizing us and uh, happy with our food and service. So you guys wanna drop by and have a good time, drink, eat. Ambay Ali is the place to be. And you have a second floor as well? Yes, we have a second floor. Uh, it's called uh, Kampai, where there are di different selection of drinks. Uh, and uh, if you want, if you're hungry, just order it from any of the restaurants downstairs that will bring it up to Kampai. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. So they serve fresh chocolate and oysters as well as baked oysters. So we found our spot here at Tambay. We got a nice table. Okay, we're at Tambay. Cheers, guys. Cheers. So we got oysters, we got oh. tempura. Oh, I didn't order anything yet, but we gotta try something, right? Okay. I was just asking her if she wanted anything to eat. She said she's still full. We're actually still kind of full, but we gotta try something while we're here. Definitely. Yeah. So this is our last stop. This is our last stop already. We have full time by Ali. We got several restaurants. The front is Tambay, the back is Wadusawa, and then Ebi Ten. Upstairs we got um, Kampai and Gold Room. And in a private room, which nobody's ever seen. Except me. From their yakitori menu, we would highly recommend the U.S. beef isao, quail eggs wrapped in bacon, and Japanese sausages. We ordered a bit of yakitori. This is some of Dick's favorites over here. Dick? Yeah, man. So this is, this is quail egg and bacon. This looks like liver. This is uh, isao. This is pork and Japanese sausage. Awesome. So dig in. What do you recommend? All of them. I, I like all of them. These are the ones that I Joey, like. Joey, please get started. <laughs> yeah. So please get started. He's out. Yeah, yeah, he's out. Oh! Sorry, try it. Here, just try that, it. That, that is chicken gut. No, no, this is actually beef he's out. Oh, it's beef he's out. Okay. Yeah, it's so beef, beef gut. gut. Beef intestine. Yeah, yes. that's right. Give it a roll. Just one bite. It's good, dude. And then tell me what it tastes like. I like it. Tasty, right? Wow, that is surprisingly good. It's kind of like it's kind of like chicharron bulaklak, and I like that it's crispy. 
it's yeah. not so chewy <laughs> and uh, most importantly it's not gooey I can't handle gooey <laughs> so I'm actually enjoying beef isao I never tried this before what are you having? the quail eggs I know you like the quail eggs and bacon it's pretty much like quail eggs wrapped in bacon any wrapped bacon yeah wow Beef Isao. That's a new discovery. Cheers, guys. So he's trying that chicken liver now. Yeah, chicken liver. What do you think? There's no escaping the taste of liver. Right? I like liver, but I'll eat it, right? <laughs> So grilled liver, I've never been a fan of. I've tried it before. I still prefer pate or foie gras. There, there, there. But I agree, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Foie gras, yes. My favorite. You know what? That is very affordable and it's awesome. We're having it with the beer. This beef. Sweet pizza, that's amazing. Try it. Yeah. I have to pull it off of the stick like this. Oh. That's small intestine. Super, now I feel it. <laughs> for real, for real. 